Am I the asshole for ruining a pregnancy announcement by telling the woman she may have taken the wrong test? My husband and I recently invited eight friends for lunch and we were asked if we could also include a new couple, Doug and Sasha. We have never met them before, but everyone who was invited had, so we said sure. At one point during dinner, Sasha needed to use the restroom, and I told her to use the master suite since the other bathroom was occupied. I was helping my husband in the kitchen when Sasha came out of the room bawling and holding something in her hand. At first, I thought she hurt herself, but she said something to Doug that caused him to drop to his knees, cry, and begin kissing her stomach. All of our friends began screaming, jumping, and crying. It was insane. Finally, Sasha tells my husband and I that she is pregnant. Of course, we congratulate both of them, and then I give them a bag to put the pregnancy test in. I will admit, I did find it odd that she brought a pregnancy test and took it at a complete stranger's house, but I didn't say that out loud. Once everyone sat down to eat, Sasha looked over to me and said, I hope you don't mind that I use one of your pregnancy tests. I just saw them and I had to. Looking at her confused, I responded, I don't have any pregnancy tests. Sasha says yes, in your drawer. I asked Sasha if she meant the blue box in the back of my lower left drawer that was closed. She seemed to realize I was pointing out that she basically snooped around and she sheepishly said the box said pregnancy for pregnancy tests. I said, Sasha, the brand is Pregmate and those are ovulation tests. I do not own pregnancy tests. Did you take an ovulation test? Her husband freaked the absolute F out at me and said his wife was not an idiot and can read a box. He insisted Sasha get the test out now and show me that I'm wrong. Sasha refused, saying she didn't need to prove anything to a complete stranger and insisted they leave immediately. One of the couples thought that Doug and Sasha acted completely ridiculous, while the other three couples thought I should have pulled Sasha aside to discuss my concerns and said I was the asshole for saying something in front of everyone. Honestly, the whole situation caught me off guard and everything happened so quickly. The whole thing was bizarre and confusing. I just didn't have the time to put the pieces together mentally before asking about the ovulation tests. Also, I found out later through one of my friends that Sasha did take the ovulation test and she is not pregnant. Story time about how I exposed my abusive, toxic boyfriend. My boyfriend is and has always been very charming. He has a ton of friends and everyone loves him. He's a very good looking guy and girls are always chasing him. I met him two years ago at a party. I had heard a bunch of stuff about him. I heard that he was a player and that he cheated on all of his girlfriends. So when he came up to me at the party, I was really cold. I basically told him I didn't want to talk to him and that I would never give him my number. And unfortunately, this made him try even harder. He could never take no for an answer. He spent an hour trying to convince me to go to have breakfast with him the next day. He was so charming and so good looking. Of course, I eventually said yes. Even a few of his guy friends at the party told me not to go. But of course, I ended up going with him to breakfast the next day. We hung out a few times and then he told me that he liked that I wasn't easy. He told me that I was different from other girls and he asked me to be his girlfriend. I said yes because I was starting to catch feelings. One night we went out with his friends and he started calling me stupid in front of them. So we went out with his friends one night and he started calling me stupid in front of them. He had never done this before and I was really surprised. I thought maybe he was just doing it to impress his guy friends. That's when I asked him straight up in front of his friends why he kept calling me stupid. One of his friends steps up and says yeah why do you keep calling her stupid? He stayed quiet for a second and didn't know what to say. Then he just laughed it off and said oh I'm so sorry I didn't realize I was doing that. That's when his friends started asking me questions about myself. I told them I was studying to be an engineer and that I had graduated with top honors. Well, let's just say they were all super impressed. We finally got into his car and he was driving me home. I was upset at him, so I decided not to give him a kiss goodnight. I started getting out of the car and he grabbed my wrist really hard. He pulled me back into the car and forcefully kissed me. He said that I embarrassed him in front of his friends, but that he'd give me a pass for it. I was actually in shock. A few weeks later, we were at the mall and he pulled my hair because he said I was looking at some guy. I tried to get up and leave and he wouldn't let me. So at the mall, he pulled my hair back because he thought I was looking at a guy. Then I tried to get up from the table, but he wouldn't let me. That's when he said he was going to have to control me more from now on. Because clearly, I was trying to look for other guys. Then he dropped me off at my dorm room and insisted on coming up. I told him I didn't want him to and that we should reconsider the relationship. I told him he needed to cool off and reconsider how he treated me. That's when he started to cry instantly. He started apologizing and told me that I was right. Then he told me that he loved me we hadn't used that word before i didn't realize at the time that he was totally manipulating me and unfortunately i decided to give him another chance a few days later he asked me why i didn't tell him i loved him back i told him i just wasn't sure then he started yelling at me telling me that there were so many girls ready for him to be single and that he had a girl text him every single night but he would say no just because of me so i told him i loved him after that he was a lot nicer until one night he slapped me one night he took me out to dinner and started asking me all these weird questions he wanted to know about my last ex and why we broke up and when i didn't give him enough information he got really angry when we got in his car he slapped me and told me that i was a liar after that he just got worse he would randomly just put me up against the wall if I annoyed him. He would constantly take my cell phone and start checking it. He even made me give him the password to my email. I decided that I was going to start recording all the abuse. I started recording all of our conversations and even set up a camera in my room. And of course, I had all this proof. 
One day I finally told him I didn't want to be with him anymore and he threatened me. I also told him that I was going to go to the police. Then he told me I would never be able to leave him and that no one would believe me because he never left bruises. That's when he started stalking me. He would also show up in my apartment and try to force his way in. He would grab me and try to kiss me and I would just push him away. So I finally went to the police and I also went to the head of the school. I finally got a restraining order and the school expelled him. If you've experienced any of this, please get out of your relationship. Don't make my mistake. This is why it's better to have one friend that you hang out with regularly instead of having a big group of friends. And trust me, you're gonna wanna listen to this story time. So when I was a sophomore in high school, I was kinda going through an identity crisis and low-key still am. I went to a predominantly white school for the majority of my life. So let's just say I was extremely whitewashed. It was one of those times in my life where if a white person said the N-word around me, I would just laugh. Not because I didn't know it was wrong, but because I wanted to be accepted and I wanted to be like everybody else and I seeked validation. Sophomore year was really when I started to become who I am today. I wanted to learn way more about my culture and my background. So I started becoming friends with people from other schools that are more diverse. Eventually, I met this group of girls, and I thought these girls were going to be the sweetest girls I would ever meet. Now, this friend group was serving flavor. I'm talking diverse to the T. One night, we decided that we were going to spend the night at one of the girls' houses. Let's call this girl Sally. I kept getting lost on the way to Sally's house, and I thought it was because I didn't know the area that well. Keep in mind, that's what I thought was the reason. I get there, and we watch like four or five movies before I end up falling asleep. And when I wake up, I was in a room full of grown-ass men staring at me. I forgot to mention in part one that when I arrived, the men were already there. Mind you, we were in sophomore year. These men looked like they were in college. So I was already a little thrown off, but I trusted it because I was with my friend. When I wake up, these men are like staring at me. But they try to look away really fast, but I could tell that they were staring at me. I start thinking the worst of the worst. I try to think of any possible way that I could get out of there, whether it was physically or mentally. So I pretend to fall asleep just to escape the reality of it. But then one of the men at the bottom of the bed starts rubbing my feet. I immediately kick my legs so I can get his hands off. Now I'm thinking he's gonna be mad and I'm gonna get fucking attacked. So I try to make small talk to loosen the tension. So I look at the guys and I'm like, hey, do you know where the girls went? One of them looks at me and says, oh, they went home. So I'm like, um, I thought this was Sally's house. And they say nothing. So at this point, I think I'm being set up. I try my best to not make it seem like I'm suspicious of them. I casually act like I need to pee. Walk into the bathroom and I see a window. Automatically something clicks in my mind, get the fuck out of there. So I go into the bathroom and there's a window. I'm thinking to myself, I would be so dumb. I would be so extremely incredibly stupid to go back into that room full of grown ass men that I've never met before. Instead of making my escape through that window right here, right now. So I trusted my gut and I got the fuck out of there. Mind you, I'm in my PJs right now. No shoes, no socks. I'm making my great escape. Call me Pablo Escobar. All I was doing all of it, I was in disbelief belief like i cannot believe that i'm escaping like right now like that's this is actually insane like i did what i believed was right at the moment and honestly that decision might be the reason why i'm alive right now so i make a run for it i immediately run to the front of the neighborhood i hide behind some trees and then i call my sister i call my sister instead of my parents because my mom was the one who drove me there and if she knew that something bad happened she wouldn't have let me go out again i'm frantically explaining everything on the phone to my sister she literally speeds to come get me when she gets there i immediately hop in her car and we get the fuck out of there on our way home I get a text from Sally. So I'm on my way home and I get a text from Sally. Hey girl, where are you? We went to the gas station to get some milkshakes. You could have came with, but you were already asleep. I didn't even respond. I just blocked all of them because I know damn well that they were not getting milkshakes. Because one, why didn't they wake me up to get milkshakes? Because I wasn't the first person to fall asleep. I'd never fall asleep first at somebody's house with a big group of people. I saw somebody else who looked like they were sleeping, so I thought that I was going to fall asleep too. Two, why were all those grown ass men there? Nobody told me that they were going to be there. Like I said, we were sophomores. These men were in college. Maybe even graduated from college. They were grown. Three, why would she lie about it being her house? Four, why did the boy say she went home? I remember when I said I kept getting lost because I didn't know the area. Once I went back to look through the messages that I had with those girls to see if there was anything fishy going on, I noticed that they were all sending me different addresses. Either one number would be off or a letter would be off. They definitely were planning something because they were trying to get me there late. I haven't seen or talked to those girls since then. I had this friend and her name was Roshan and she was like literally the luckiest but also the most unlucky person I've- Oh my god, is she- See, this is what I mean, okay? My lights have never flashed. And, like, since I've, like, started to, like, record this story, the lights are flashing. Which is fucking terrifying because I'm going to tell you the story that Roshan told me. Roshan had told me about three separate times in her life where she had almost died. And this was not, like, she told me all at once. Like, she told me three separate times about, like, one instance. And it got way worse, like, towards the end. Like, you guys, I'm just going to get into it. Me and Russian were church friends, okay? And we hung out and went to Lakewood Church, which is this church. It's the biggest church in America. It's in Houston. Joel Osteen preaches here, okay? And Jesus Christ, does he make a lot of money off of it. Meaning that the kids section of that church 
is wild. It's huge. It's like literally over a thousand kids go, all right? And there's like sections of junior high and high school. So basically there's a bunch of little cliques. And one of my little cliques that I met was this girl named Rosha. She was homeschooled and she was so cool and so nice. And one day we're sitting there and I'm like, Roshan, tell me the scariest story or the scariest thing that's ever happened to you. And Roshan's face just like darkens immediately. And she was like, well, there was this doll that I had. And ever since I got this doll, like my life was just kind of weird. Mm, I was like, do tell Annabelle. She says that since she got this like doll, which they got at like a thrift store, she started having these super vivid nightmares, feeling like her covers being pulled off of her in the middle of the night and things around her house were just being misplaced like everywhere. And it's hard to remember because again, I was told this story in childhood, but basically I just know that the doll was making like the entire family's life like really hard. And it got so bad that her adult father, he did like an exorcism like on the house. Like he had to bless the entire house. He threw away the dolls, but like Roshan's troubles didn't stop there. So like later, I guess when we meet up at church and see each other, she lets me know that something crazy happened. And I'm like, Roshan, your life's a fucking movie. She had been playing in the tree, I guess like in her yard. And she had climbed all the way up to the top and she lost her footing and she fell. She fell onto the electric lines. And she was like, her heart stopped beating until they had to revive her, the ambulance, right? And she said it was so scary because she, she saw nothing, just everything went black. And like, I don't know if this was related to the doll or whatever, but I thought that was so fucking crazy. Fast forward, I'm in high school. I don't go to church anymore and I see Roshan at Chick-fil-A. Her and her mom recognized me first and I didn't recognize Roshan because she had burn marks across her entire face and her body. Come to find out her house had burnt down and her mom had to run in and save her. The same house! Okay, so story time. By the way, follow at Glamba Helen on Instagram and send me your stories. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. There was this girl, we'll call her Braylon who had just moved in next to me. This girl was in the same school as I was in the same grade. Definitely didn't take her long to get popular though. I'm gonna be completely honest. I did not like this B word. I think you know what I'm saying. You know, I just had a feeling from like the moment I met her. There was this one time during class where she just walked up to me and called me a fat ass B word. Like, huh? What? It doesn't make sense. And here's where shit went downhill quick. So we live in a small town called Callahan, and right beside us there's another small town called Hillard. There's this doctor's office slash clinic in Hillard that pretty much half of my school goes to. So this one particular time, I went with my friend to get her flu shot. Surprise, surprise, my neighbor was there. You will not believe what happened next. Life for part two. Okay, so part two. Okay, so there ended up being a little wave room that you could sit and wait until the nurses call you in. When they call you in, there's like this little hallway with a wait scan thing. The little B-word's mom was in tears because her daughter had weighed 246 pounds. And me and my friend got in trouble because we started busting out laughing. Not at her, but her mom. And the second she called me a fat B-word, I screamed that out loud and my friend yelled I'm the friend she went with. FYI, I weighed like 184 pounds at the time. And she never spoke to me literally ever again. So about two weeks after that little incident, it was summer break and it was Friday. So for me, that meant my boyfriend was allowed to come over. And before he came, I told him that I had a dentist appointment. Plus, my Nana was sick and I didn't want her to be alone, so I wanted him to stay at my house anyways. Well, when I came back home from my dentist appointment, I went straight to my Nana's room to check on her and she was asleep. Like for part three. Okay, so part three. So I went to check on my Nana and she was asleep. Then I went to my room where I knew my boyfriend was in it. And before I opened the door, I heard moaning. I slung that door open, and I'm pretty sure you know what I saw. I grabbed that blonde-headed, big-nosed B-word by the hair and dragged her all the way to my back door, which was literally right beside my bedroom. After I did that, I told her if she didn't get the hell off my property, I was calling the cops. She ended up leaving, and all she had on was a bra and some shorts. Right after that, I went back to my bedroom and told my boyfriend to get out of my house. The next day, I went and told her mama what she did, and my boyfriend and my house in my bedroom on my bed. There is just no common sense. Her mom beat her ass, and I recorded it and kind of posted it on Instagram. By the way, half the school didn't like her anymore after I called her out. 
And then there was my boyfriend. Well, X. Like for part four. Okay, so part four. I ended up inboxing the entire school and telling them what happened. And payback hit them hard. Now, I wouldn't say I'm popular, but everyone likes me and I have a new boyfriend. My ex got kicked off the football team because someone went running to the teachers and told them everything. But yeah, so don't do this to people and you won't get the karma coming back to bite you. Am I the asshole for kissing my friend's brother without his consent during a truth or dare? Yesterday, I was supposed to spend the night at my friend's house with some of my classmates and we were playing truth or dare. There really is no reason for us to choose truth since we already know a lot about each other. So we mostly just went with dares. It was pretty fun and we had some weird challenges. I was sitting next to my friend's brother and when it was my turn, a classmate challenged me to kiss him. His sister immediately told my friend to change the dare and so she did. To be clear, her brother did not say anything when he heard the dare and just laughed. So he definitely looked like he was okay with it, right? Well, wrong. Because after I kissed him, he told me, WTF am I doing? And looked like he was really grossed out by it. Honestly, I was offended and asked why he was so grossed out by me kissing him. I am actually a pretty okay looking girl and even if I wasn't, there was no reason for him to act like this. He ended up leaving the game and my friend told me that what I did was wrong on so many levels and to get out of her house. My other classmates didn't say anything, so I think they were on my side, but didn't want to participate in this argument. I will ask them when they get back home. Anyways, I did end up leaving. So, do you guys think I was the asshole here?